So uh, these present value tables, right? Uh, they are extremely useful for doing these kinds of things, uh, for, for answering practical questions. The hardest part that you will find about using present value tables is knowing when and how to use them. Okay, so can I ask you to have a look at this question? We're going to do two examples, right? Generally speaking, a question will have to tell you to use a present value table because they will literally print out a present value table for you. They don't expect you to bring one with you, okay? Um, so you can see here, it says in part A, right, use the present value table, which by the way, um, I, I do have it on screen here. I'll change it in a minute, but it might actually be useful if you have it on your laptop and you can also see this question simultaneously. So if you haven't opened it up, I encourage you to do so. The trickiest part of these questions is, you know you've got to use the present value table, but you're like, what, what is the present value? What's the thing there that tells me this is going to be the number I, I multiply or divide by some interest rate, okay? So let's read it together and see what's going on. A retiree pays a principal P dollars to a bank uh, on the 1st of January. And then on 31st of December each year for the next 20 years, the bank pays him a pension of $35,000. Okay, and this is what happens kind of in real life all the time. This is kind of the way superannuation works, right? It's like, I've spent my whole life earning all of this money and I've set some aside and then I'm going to pay it to you so that you can sort of drip feed it back to me over time and I still have income even when I'm not working, okay? And then it says, use a present value table. Now, if a question just said, find the present value of blah, 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 you would just do something like this. It's super easy, okay? But here you've got to do a bit of interpretation, okay? So I'm going to wipe off the board and I want you to have a think with the person next to you, right? Open up the table and then think with all the numbers that you've gotten here, how do you think they fit together? Does it fit together like this? Does it fit together like that? What equation are you gonna form? Let me give you 60, 90 seconds to have a think while I get some space, and then we'll work it together. All right, so I gave you a bit of thinking head start. Let me show you the way that I think this through and we'll see whether yours lined up with my logic, okay? So the first thing is I always do this, right? When you've got a question, I write down the key piece of information. Thankfully, mercifully, there are not that many. Interest rate, period of time, okay? Now these two things correspond to the column and the row, column and the row of the present value table, right? When we read, read to the right spot, we're gonna get a present value factor. We call it a factor because you multiply by this number, right? That's what a factor is. So just go ahead, tell me in the, in the table, uh, am, am I far down enough? Yeah, just barely, right? Um, the 4% means we're here in the middle. Okay, you can see that column. And then for 20, where am I at? What's the actual number? Can you see it? 13.59. Great, 30.5, 5.9? Man, where is it? It's uh, that one, isn't it? Is that it? Yes? Okay, great. So I'm just jotting this down. Now, when we say, because the question asks us to work out what P the principal is, okay? I want you to, again, think back to that graph. This is why this graph is so helpful, okay? That principal, the retiree puts it in the bank, and then what does it do for the next 20 years? It just compounds, right? It's a lump sum a lump sum that gets interest applied to it, and then in the future, it will be worth some amount, okay? But the thing is, we, we keep grabbing stuff out of it, but nonetheless, that's what the initial lump sum is, okay? So P, the principal in this case, this is the present value that I'm trying to work out. The hardest part is, what on earth is the present value in this question, okay? The principal goes in like today, so that's why it's the, the present value, okay? Now, that 13.59, O three that gets multiplied by, well, have a think, right? How much does he want every single year? Not a dollar paid out, he wants 35,000. I actually said he, I don't think the question specifies, could be she, no idea, okay? So calculation wise, this is not very complicated, right? We get an answer out, we should only be getting or expecting six significant figures of accuracy, so someone gone and worked it out for me. What's our dollar sign? From memory, it starts with a four, doesn't it? 400 and? 475,000. Yep. 60? 61. 
dollars. Okay, um, and I'm going to write six significant figures here. Okay, so let's just pause on this and see if this makes sense to us. Okay. $475,000 is a lot of money, okay? But the whole idea is it has to be big because the retiree is going to draw out of it for 20 years. Now, if you think about that 20 years, right? 20 years, how much is being drawn out every year? 35000 which means that uh, over the life of this loan, this superannuation, whatever it is, the bank or the retirement fund is going to pay out how much? 700000 okay? Now this is considerably less than 700,000, but the reason it can be is because interest keeps getting applied for that whole 20 years, right? So therefore, in the end, even though this is how much the retiree put in, this is how much the bank will pay back. And your sense check sort of can work here. You're like, oh, it's less, but it's in the ballpark. Following so far?